What's the word, y'all? Uh, today, we're going to be ranking NBA teams on how watchable I think they're going to be this upcoming season. We did this towards the end of the 2020-2021 season, and a lot of people was hot about how I spent my time watching NBA teams. Remember, this is my subjective opinion. So if I rank your team low, it is what it is. I just won't watch it as much as you. I think that's I think that's fine. It's only one person that can live my life, and that is me. And if I want to live it watching the Bulls be bad, I'll do that. You feel me? Leave a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section what you agree or disagree with. Just don't don't be toxic. All right, so here are the tiers we got them in. Uh, just, just let me walk you through these really, really fast. Uh, tier 1 and Tier 2 are very, very similar, but this is the difference. Tier 1 is won't miss a game, meaning that if it is up to me, out of the 82 games this organization, these organizations play, I am trying my hardest to watch every single game. It's unrealistic because even the Bulls, who I try to watch every single game of, I do miss games because real life takes control every once in a while. But I try my hardest to watch every single Bulls game. I put that right there because you know I'm a fan of this team. Whether you like it or not, I will be tuning in to majority of the Bulls games. The next one is must-see TV. I'm going to make an effort to watch as many games as possible, but it's unrealistic for me to go out there and watch 82 games. Pretty fun. Um, a lot of these teams might have like special features or special players in their team that make me go out of my way to watch them. Enjoyable is exactly what it sounds like. Like this team is going to be good, enjoyable, but it's like, uh, it's, enjoyable is like the C tier in this universe, all right? Early season is one that we added. All these other ones were on the video from 2021. Early season means that this is a team that I might tune in a bunch through the first 20 games of the year, but I don't see myself carrying 70 games into the season. These are mostly the tank teams, let's be honest. I'm, I'm very intrigued on a lot of the tank teams to see these young players evolve. But realistically, we're going to get to the point where we halfway through the season, instead of me watching a real-life game live, I'm, I'm watching highlights or possessions of my favorite players on those teams. And then the last one has got to be a special occasion. That's F tier. That, that, that's, that's my nice way of saying, bruh. If it's up to me, I ain't, if it's up to me, but even this feels disrespectful because this, this team might be early season because I'm still a fan of Donovan Mitchell, but I feel like I could watch Donovan Mitchell possessions or get the notification when the Jazz are in a close game when Donovan Mitchell might take over without watching the first 40 something minutes. I just don't know what to expect from them because I'm expecting nothing. I'm going to put them in the Gotta Be a Special Occasion, which is they're in a close game with a couple minutes left, or Donovan Mitchell got 30 points at halftime, and I'm tuning in to watch the rest. But then there's not a ton to really care about on that team. I like V8. You know what I'm saying? They might got some young people that might blossom a little bit. I don't really know. But going into this season, this is the way it is. I'm going to also do this at the end of this season so we can see what teams improved or, or got higher in the next year or what teams disappointed me, all right? I am a firm believer that this 76er team will be... Must see TV. MVP candidate Joel Embiid. I think he might be the favorite going into next season considering he's finished second a couple times in his career. James Harden looks in shape. And I, I'm still high on James Harden this ability to be great after last season not being that. Tyrese Maxey ain't, ain't done my official most improved player. Yada, yada, yada. Tyrese Maxey was the most improved player conversations last year. But I think he's going to take another jump. They just brought in P.J. Tucker. They got De'Anthony Melton. I think this is much watch TV when you think about Joel and, and um, James Harden being one of the best pick and roll duos in the NBA. I think they were actually number one. The Washington Wizards get the early season tag because I don't really know what to expect, but I like a lot of the things they did this offseason. Um, the Monte Morris pickup to make him their starting point guard is a dub because he's one of the more safe point guards in basketball. Porzingis, after he got traded there, looked pretty solid in the spurts that he had. Bradley Beal is back, obviously. And they got a couple people on that roster like Denny Abdiya, Rui Hachimura that I'm intrigued about. But I don't know if I'll be watching them a halfway through the season. But if they're better than anticipated, then they can jump up. I think the Atlanta Hawks are going to go to the pretty fun tier. I won't go, go as far as I said they must see TV, even though Trey Young, Trey Young by himself might make them must see TV. But Trey Young was there last year, and they, they weren't even really here because I was disappointed in what they was doing. So I'm going to put them in a pretty fun tier because Trey Young is, is very close to must-see TV and DeJounte Murray is beefing with people before the season even started. So I'm excited to see what the heck that's about. Cleveland Cavaliers were my number one league pass team last season. I'm going to I'm gonna guess that early season they're going to be must-see TV, but I am a little afraid that they're going to let me down this year and not be as fun as they were last year because now there's expectations. And as you know, 
Like, same thing with my Chicago Bulls. If you come out the gate, guns blazing, and you look pretty good, that next season is extremely hard to match that energy. And I hope that the Cavs and or the Bulls don't let me down. I'm going to go pretty fun for the Detroit Pistons. Jaden Ivey, I watched his first game of his summer league career and then watched the game before he tweaked his ankle. And he was he was electric. K Cunningham is electric. Um, Isaiah Stewart was shooting threes in summer league. I'm going to say they're pretty fun. They, they are borderline maybe here. But I'm going to go pretty fun right now because I, I don't know if I'm completely convinced they're going to be super competitive. I wouldn't be surprised if they were. But if they're going to be like next level competitive, I don't really know. Pacers are going to go early season for me. They got my boy Tyrese. They got Jayla Smith, who we made a video about a couple days ago. Um, and they got ben, uh, Benedict Matherin, who I'm high on. But I think they're going to be an early season team because I think themselves, their goal is to be in the Victor Robin Yama sweepstakes. So I don't expect them to be 40 games to the season really trying their hardest. But Reese, Reese in himself is really fun. Um, but the rest is kind of iffy. Milwaukee Bucks is must-see TV. NBA champion, I won't say favorites, but contenders, of course, um, great team. Giannis is on it, and Giannis in himself is close to here. But I don't think I'm going to get to this point. I will go must-see TV for the for the Bucks. If I wasn't a Bulls fan, obviously the Bulls wouldn't be here. But it, legitimately, this is part of fandom for me. The Raptors. Ooh, where do I want to put the Raps, bro? Where do I want to put the Raps? I'm, they're, they're between pretty fun and must-see TV for me. They got a lot of things on that roster that I really, really enjoy. I, I'm talking myself into must-see TV. I'm going to put them in pretty fun with the ability to raise up once we all done. Mavericks are must-see TV. Mostly because their offseason for me was a bit eh. Christian Wood is probably going to have some really crazy great numbers, and I'm excited about that. Luka Doncic is must-see TV as an individual talent. Um, but I'm, I'm a little bit afraid about the Jalen Brunson loss and not really replacing him with any point guard. I thought Gor Goran Drogba was a lot to go there, and instead he's in Chicago this upcoming season. But I'm going to say just because Luka is Luka, and they still got pieces around him that can shoot and play good defense, I'm going to put them in a must-see TV tier. I am putting Denver must-see TV, man. I'm putting Denver must-see TV. Listen, I'm a fan of basketball, y'all. My job in life is watching a ton of basketball. So, yes, we're going to have a lot of teams in must-see TV because that's just what I do. When the game starts at 6 o'clock on a random Wednesday, I come here, I put the main game on the big TV, and I put the other games on the, on the small monitor. So, a lot of it's going to be a lot of must-see TV. They're close to here. I'm not going to put them here. I'm not going to put them here. But they're close to here because I miss watching Jamal Murray, and I, I miss watching Kevin Porter, uh, Michael Porter Jr. But I do believe... That we're going to get like 60 games to the season. And, I, and they're still going to be must-see TV. But I won't be breaking my neck to watch them. So I'm going to put them in must-see TV right now. That's easy. That's easy. They were must-see TV last season. Nothing has really changed. This is still legit. Memphis Grizzlies is that. John Moran, Desmond Bain. Jaron is going to be off for some time. Uh, but I, I, I'm going to put must-see TV for the Memphis Grizzlies as well. I'm so intrigued about the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'm putting them in the I won't miss a game tier. Yep. Now, this is definitely going to change throughout the season. But I, I, I honestly do believe I will be watching, at minimum, the first 20 games bar none. And the reason why is that I want to see what they look like in the beginning and how they improve. And, I mean, I guess the opposite can happen, too. How they adjust to playing with each other. I mean, they made one of the biggest trades in NBA history this season. And they have two legitimate centers, two of the top Three, no, th two of the top four centers in basketball are on the same team. Maybe five, depending on how you look at some people. And I'm curious how this going to work. Anthony Edwards is that is that guy. I, I know you like Kenny. How are they? Won't miss a game, but like real life contenders in Philly and real life contenders in Milwaukee are in the tier below. And the mostly because... I know what Philly's going to give you. I know what the Bucks are going to give you. I know what the Mavericks are going to give you. But this team, there's a lot of possibilities. So because of that, I won't miss a game, at least again through the first half or so. Got to be a special case for the Spurs. I won't talk too much about it. I think Keldon's going to be a stud. I even think Josh Primo's going to be pretty solid. Yaka Perdo is one of my favorite um, centers in basketball. But let's let's keep it a buck. They sold heavily at the, at the, deadline, or, uh, the beginning of this offseason. They know what they're doing, and I know what they're doing, and what they're doing is not trying to win. Clippers, must-see TV. Um, Phoenix Suns. Last year, I think I put the Phoenix Suns in Tier A. I was so disappointed on what they did last season and how it ended. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm 
I'm skipping them for a minute, bro, because I don't know where I want to put them. But the Portland Trail Blazers are going to be in a pretty fun team uh, tier. I think Dame, a lot of people are skeptical about Dame because of what last season. I think he's going to shut all of that up. He's going to be great again. Anthony Simons is really good in the minutes that he was getting without Dame. Josh Hart is super underrated. Jeremy Grant pickup is really solid. I'm going to go with pretty fun, but I won't say they're must-see TV, at least right now. The Kings are a tough team. You know what? I'm putting the Suns in pretty fun. Show me, bro. For the last two seasons, I was enjoying every single game imaginable. And yeah, we talking about regular season here. But the way, again, the way it ended was so, so drastically bad that I don't even want to put them in must-see TV because I think, I think a lot of people, even if this team goes out and wins 55, 60 games, everybody be like, you know, you show us, show us. Oh, um, man, that's kind of how I feel too. So I'm going to put them in pretty fun. They still got some, like Chris Paul is literally my favorite player of all time. Um... And then Mikel is the homie. So I will be watching a ton of their games, obviously. But I'm putting in a pretty fun team tier because there are times when it's not pretty fun. The Kings, I think I want to put them in an enjoyable tier. I'm excited about a lot of the stuff they did this offseason. I don't know how realistic it is that they win a bunch of games considering I think the defense is probably going to be pretty bad. But early stage is going to be fun. I think they're going to be an enjoyable team to watch. I'm kind of high on the Knicks, man. But the way the Knicks play basketball... It's so grinded out because Tom Thibodeau is their coach. I want to put them in enjoyable, even though I think they're going to they're gonna be a playoff team this year. I, I'm going to put them enjoyable and leave it at that. Uh, RJ Stepp, Jalen Brunson, they finally have a point guard over there. Uh, Isaiah Hardenstein is my favorite backup center in all of basketball. So they got a lot of stuff there, but I'm going to put them enjoyable right now. Legit don't think I'll miss a game with the Pelicans. I don't. They had me last season, and now we're adding Zion back in? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Stop. Stop. That's all I need to know. This, this team is about to be electric. They're going to be fun as heck. Zion, Brandon Ingram, CJ, come on, man. And Herb Jones clamping up on the... Oh, and Jose Alvarado forced the turnovers. And we still got big Jonas Valens. Come on, man. That's that's. I won't miss a game. At least I'm going to try not to miss a game with the Pelicans. This is interesting. This team could go in either of these three tiers because they will be enjoyable because LaMelo Ball is a highlight reel in himself. Hopefully, James Book and I get some, some PT, but it's Steve Clifford. Um, so we'll see, you know, he's got a mixed track record when it comes to these younger players. It could be an early season team because losing Miles Bridges is such, such a bad thing for the organization, or it could be a special occasion team because I don't think they're going to be very good. I'm going to go early season, see where they start off, see how they go. And then we'll move it accordingly. Jalen Green is a stud and Tari Eason is my favorite rookie in this entire draft class. So I'm going to go enjoyable. I don't think they're going to be trying to really compete. I think they still are looking to have uh, good lottery uh, odds. I'm going to put the Miami Heat in pretty fun. Kind of feels disrespectful. That's like that's not ranking them based on their individual talent or the t talent as a team because they're a good team. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it's something that's missing about them that makes me want to watch them every single game. It's not that they're bad, obviously. They're very far from bad. But it's missing something. Maybe it's missing an extra player that I really, really like. Obviously, I really like Jimmy Butler. Obviously, I really like Bam Adebayo. But nobody else, else in that roster is like, oh, I need to tune in because I really am a fan of that guy. Tyler Rose good. Like, these are, I'm not saying that they're not good. But, like, these other teams, I can name multiple. Like, the teams that are must-see TV and won't miss a game, I can name three to five players that are, like, I really, really love. And the Miami Heat basically have two. They're really high two, but, but still two. They had three last year because P.J. was there. And now PJ on another must-see TV team. But it's like, the Heat are going to be a very good team, as they usually are. And they're going to be fun. That's how I look at it. Do the Brooklyn Nets even get added anywhere? Because what do we expect from the Brooklyn Nets? I don't know. If we're, we're looking at what their roster is right now, I'm going to say they must-see TV. But I, I, I mean, I'm going to go, actually, they must-see TV maybe for the drama and not so much the basketball, right? OKC is going to be enjoyable. Um, at least in the first half of the season before they shut Shea down. Shea is going to be an all-star as long as they let him play. I don't see a world where he don't put up the right amount of numbers. And when they did play healthy last season, they weren't a good team, but they weren't a terrible team. I think their defense was 17th in the league last year with all the bad things. I got that from the Athletic NBA show. Shout out to them. Um, so I think they're going to be enjoyable. Like these younger teams are going to be enjoyable. Warriors, you know where I'm going with that one. Uh, I will not miss a game with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. All of them going to be healthy coming off a championship run. Wiggins, of course, and Kevon Looney. That is a team that I will not miss a game of if I can help it. I'm putting the Celtics in must-see TV. A team that went on the finals run. And when they actually, hmm, do I want to put them a little bit higher? I'm, I'm, okay, okay, I'm going to keep them here. Because last year, they were must-see TV in the bad stages and when they were ramping it up and obviously in the finals run. I'm going to put them in must-see TV. The Lakers are must-see TV. 
Whether it's a dumpster fire, a car crash, a crime scene, they're a must-see TV, bro, no matter if it's for the good or for the bad. No, you, can, you cannot deny that fact. And LeBron James in itself is must-see TV person, for me at least. Because he ain't lost, a, well, he's, he, ain't, he ain't losing much in his older age. And I do believe that Anthony Davis is going to have a nice little bounce back season. And I'm putting the Orlando Magic in enjoyable with the potential to go to pretty fun. I'm going to put him enjoyable. I, got, I like this nice young core of teams. They're going to be enjoyable. I'm putting the Knicks up. This feels like the right tier for the, for the, the teams that are going to be fun, but maybe not a lot of expectations. I'm kind of rocking with this. And the, the more I look at it, this is like an NBA player tier ranking or NBA team tier ranking because these teams are probably not competing for much other than lottery balls. And these, the, these are the pretty fun teams. And maybe they're fun because they're trying to win basketball games. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think. What is your uh, won't miss a game team that I didn't have higher? Or what team did I have too high in your personal opinion? Uh, I'll be in that comment section as I always am. I'll see y'all soon. Peace.